and grab the critter stuff and if you saw the post on the group i've popped a file up in the files section to give you some ideas of where i get my shapes from so i'll be referring to that but you can print it out if you want to you can have it on a screen if you want to i'm probably going to use one of the shapes from here but i've got some others to show you as well but when i get this bit of paper out that's where you can find it okay so i really like imaginary critters so i thought we would do those and have a look at them together now i first did these when i was little and i would make up creatures and it was something i loved to do um so it's been part of my personal art practice since i was really small and i think most kids do hi bev it is absolutely my pleasure so these are some of the little journals now i have shown these before but i'm going to just go through them really quickly in case there's anybody who hasn't seen them and also because it's a good reminder so when i first started to get back into doing more arty stuff i took a jelly printing class because i, I basically like to try everything and i would never tried that with carla sonheim um, and if you Google her, you'll see her classes. I enjoyed the jelly printing class, and then I noticed she'd got some other classes on, like creature creation and junk journaling. And this is something I started and never finished in her classes. She makes the most awesome kind of splatter pages. Now, this is something I'd done before. I did the class with her, and I think almost everybody has done something like this somewhere, um, where you basically create backgrounds and then you find stuff in them. I mean... Oh, thanks, Myrna. I really appreciate you popping in. I hope it goes, the lecture prep goes swiftly. Um, hi, Kay. So you can create this by doing watercolour, wetting, wet, splatters. There's loads of ways of doing it. But she then did some great stuff with using, this was like pencil crayon and stuff to um, create critters. And I enjoyed that class. And she also did the kind of junk journaling where you use torn paper so if you look at these ones i've got an acrylic background and then i've put torn paper on you can then put gesso on now in her class she used um junk mail i've used old scraps of jelly printing because that's what i had so i kind of started there and kind of rediscovered my love of it and so i was really grateful grateful for that class then i went and a bit later did the class with mickey wild that i've mentioned before and started creating things like these and she talked you through a lot of exercises that are really familiar um, to people who have got into creating creatures and are great warm-ups. Um, things like taking a blob of watercolour and then turning it into something, which is a great practice. The one thing that she did in the class, which was really, really fab and I really enjoyed, was she got you to start collecting eyes. And she taught you about six. And then I've added to those. And the same with noses and mouths. And Google is a fantastic place to go and look for these, especially if you kind of look for um, eye illustration or cartoon eyes, as well as just eyes. So the and draw and, uh, and drawn eyes sometimes, but illustration and cartoon tend to give you some ideas that you can use. So I tend to have this around and about when I am making critters. So I'll have it around and about today. The sort of thing that I'm hoping we're going to create together is the sort of thing I've got in this little book. Now, I often collect these shapes by going out to somewhere and I have this sketchbook with me and I draw a pencil sketch of the outline of a shape. So if you look at this one, I would literally just draw that shape into my sketchbook. I'd pop a little note about where it was and then... Thanks, Nancy. I would then um, come back to that another point to draw it. If I can't, if I don't have a sketchbook, then I take a close-up photo of the bit I'm trying to look at. And that's what pretty much all of these came from. Now, I know that for some of us, it's pretty tricky to get out and about much at the moment. But if you, if you are going for walks and exercises and all that kind of stuff, then this is something you can grab a picture of. But you can also... This one was created by a photograph that a friend sent me of their frying pan oil. This was the shape of the oily blob in their frying pan. And I took that blob and then turned it into this. Another thing that you can 
um, use are things like if you have got a garden or if you've got plants, you can kind of go out and you can look at shapes that moss makes or on branches or trees. If you have a friend who walks, runs and, or if you do, or have done, and you get the roots on your um, phone, the last, was it the last one I did in here? The last one I did in here, it was based on my husband's um, walking route. He'd taken to send him a little text that um, kind of likened them to countries or various things that he'd found. And I turned this one into a many-spined toothless gulper eel. My son informed me it looked like a gulper eel and I quite like that. So that's what we're going to have a go at. I am going to work on this. It is quite small. If it is too small and you can't see well enough what I'm doing, can somebody give me a shout in the comments and I will try and move my phone closer. So this is in the file section in the Mindful Watercolours group. And what I've done is I've put on a, a few selections of things that we could use. These are walks um, that were hanging around on my phone. This is a great big pile of rubbish. And what I would normally do is go into part of it. So like here, which is obviously a bit small for you guys to see. And I would see what I could find in there. But I can see that there are two ears here. One there and one there. I can see some kind of eye. And I can see this kind of shape there. And there's, there's maybe a little... And I would pick out the shape and then I'd transfer that to my sketchbook. This one, yeah, it could be a novel. Um, you, you, there's lots of things. So what I thought we'd do is maybe take one of these walks and do one of those. I sometimes find it easier to spot the critter in them when the colours aren't there. So I've been able, you can print them out black and white as well, which can be quite useful. Um, I'm going to use the colour one today just for ease. And the other thing I printed out to show you was, these are pictures of walls, mainly, and floors that I have lurking around. That's actually algae on top of the canal. Um, but when you start to see them in black and white, you can start to see shapes like that is really kind of fish-like to me here. This kind of shape that's there. And I could do, definitely do something with that, I think. Um, I might give it long legs because it looks like there's a little leg there. So, I I think it doesn't, that one, we'll start with that one and let's see how we go. So, I'm trying to position this so you can see this one that we're looking at and my sketchbook. So, I just have to wait for my video to catch up with me because otherwise I won't know that you can watch. So, I'm going to check in on the comments while that's doing. Hello, mum. How are my socks doing? My mum is knitting me some gorgeous socks so I don't have to steal the kids' socks anymore. It won't stop me, but don't tell her because they really are incredibly pretty. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'll do is just fairly lightly, I'm gonna do this darker than I would so that you can see it. I will transfer this as a line drawing. Now, the way I'm going to do it is to try and do it as a continuous line and I'm going to try and slow my it does look a bit like a witch on a broom yeah slow myself down so that the speed my eye is looking along this line is the speed my pencil's going at so I've got that kind of shape there and then it comes and goes down there's a little wiggle and then it comes down and there's that little I'm going to put the whole point in there and then I'm going to follow this line and it goes up here and then curves around and then I'm just going to come back here I might have gone in a little bit too far there I think I'm not usually particularly fussy about getting them exact but I'm obviously feeling a little bit pernickety tonight about it and then this kind of comes and curves around here now you can see it's not exactly but it's close enough then there is, I love the pom-pom on the hat, Dale. This bit comes down here and kind of comes there. And I've got this and then this bit comes here. I'm gonna to have to go onto my second page here. And there's a little bump there. 
Now, I've not got that thin bit there, so I've joined it there. I'm going to just be okay with that and not go back and rub it out. I am going to put that. So I'm going to pop that out of the way. And the first thing I tend to try and do is to find an eye. Find where I want to put the eye or where the eye might go. And I can see a couple of possibilities, but I'm thinking that my eye is going to go up here. Um, I think we'll see. And I grab out my little eye book and one of my favourite eyes is this. And then I really like these kind of circular eyes. So I'm probably going to go for something like that, I think. I do see that I could put an eye here and get something totally different as well, which would be quite fun. I think I'm just going to go for... I could even have an eye there and have eyes on stalks. That would be quite awesome. I'm going to go... Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go for popping an eye here. Just like that. And then I think there'll be some kind of eye there, but I'm not sure how I'm going to show it. This now feels like a nose as if the head's looking backwards to me. So I'm just going to go for a really kind of basic triangular kind of nose like that. And a line that comes down and probably does that, I think, here. This is going to end up being my ground, not a tail at all which is surprising because I really thought that was going to be a tail. That here, it just, it's screaming at me to be a horn. Don't know why. So that's basically popping in. It's a curvy line. And then I pop in a couple of curvy lines on one side and a couple of curvy lines on the other that kind of hint at it being curved. I'm then, I'm not sure about this mouth. I think I want something different. I don't want um, like a rabbity mouth. So I'm going to alter that for a second and have a little bit of a think. I'm going to have a look at my mouths. I think eyes on stalks would look awesome. Um, so while I'm having a look at my mouths, if you are drawing along with me, it gives you a little bit of a chance to kind of make sure you've got your pencil line down and that you've started thinking about your, um, where your eye is going to go. I'm going to actually go for adding a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. I think maybe I want to change that nose. And this is where I let myself have a bit of artistic freedom um, to change the shape slightly if I want to. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to pop that line back in for now. I think, I think actually I'd quite like to have a nose hole <laughs> like that, yeah. And then I think, yeah, a mouth. I think I'm going to have a mouth that kind of comes a little bit, you know, like turtle mouths, a little bit like that. But then I'm going to do, so it looks like, hi Tina. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about fangs. I like the idea of fangs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... If you do a line along the top like that and then come along and go at the bottom a little bit and like that, you get... It's almost like a gummy look. But then here on this last one, I'm going to put this little fang because that pleases me quite a lot, <laughs> to be honest. I really want to add some kind of uh, an ear, I think, here. So... I'm going to just pop in just a rough ear shape to see if I like it. I might take it out, I might not like it. And I'm thinking that I'd probably have a matching kind of ear over this side. And then this guy feels like he's kind of, he's rearing up maybe. This one, Bev, did you ask me about my eraser? Um, this one is, it's called a Stapler Mars Plastic. It's got quite a thick rubber in it, but it's a little bit more controllable sometimes than um, a standard kind of block eraser, like a Stabilo, which is what I've got hanging around. And then the other sort that I tend to use an awful lot and do need to grab out. So thank you for talking about erasers and reminding me. 
I moved everything around today back into its right place. Now these, it's a Tombow Mono Eraser. Um, these are probably one of my favourites for getting into tight gaps. So, I'm thinking that, I don't know why I really quite like that and I might even give him a little bit of a funny, yep. Yeah. I want to put a tail on and I really love tails that are like this. So you start with a kind of a, an irregular, I don't know what you'd call it, rectangly kind of shape. You see that well enough. Then do one that's a little bit closer in. And then a little bit closer in. You often use these for like insect legs. A little bit closer in. And then on the very end, I like to stick. It's like, um, hmm. you do a semicircle with a curved top. And then you do... It's like a rectangle, but with a rounded end, like that. And then you do it again, but a little bit smaller, and a little bit smaller, and then just do a little bobble on the top. So I'm liking that kind of odd little tail. I don't have very many ideas for feet. So you can see that's where I've got my tail from. So I've grabbed it out of my book. Um, I don't have much for feet, so I'm going to have a little bit of a think. I normally revert to doing just um, these, like that. Or, where did I put the big one? Here, rubber, eraser. Yes, there we go. Uh, oh, I sometimes do ones that just go up in the middle like that. Now, I could give him two legs if I did it like that, couldn't I? No, don't like that. Too realistic -y trying to do perspective. I don't fancy it. So I think I'm going to go for littler, but many-toed feet. Like that. Now I need to figure out where his kind of tummy is, I suppose. But I might not. It's probably that leg would carry on there. That leg would carry on there. And this bit here would be his tummy. So I just need to take off just a tiny bit of those lines. There and there. So I've now got, pretty much I've got the start of a critter, haven't I? I'm feeling like he probably could have a little bit of um, a mainy thing going on there. Hmm, I really do love spots. He is, he is prancing. He's going to need a friend or something over here. And I haven't quite figured out what this is going to be yet, have I? Um, but I do feel like it needs to have lots of little, like, seeds or something they look like. But I just, oh yeah. Yeah, this is a lure. He lures something with this. I'm not sure what, but he lures it. You know, like those fish that you get really low down. What are they called? Oh, I've totally forgotten. They have the light, the dang anglerfish. Are they anglerfish? I might be remembering the right or wrong thing. I'm not sure. So I'm feeling pretty happy with how he's looking. When you get to the stage where you're feeling happy with what's there, that's when you switch to fine liners. So I'm going to have a little bit of a pause now. Yes, it is. That I love that posh word. Dale is really good with the posh words, correct vocabulary for things. Yes, I used to lie and do that for hours. Really. Thanks, Jez. It is an anglerfish. So that's what I'm thinking. So part of the fun of this for me is actually making the names up and the story behind them. This book, it is a Moleskine. I'm never sure how you say that. Accordion book. So... I don't think I've got the proper... Oh, hang on, does this tell me anything? No, it's just the usual bits. No, I don't have anything other than that, but I can tell you how big it is, if that's any help. Um, Tina, the cover is... around five and a half inches by around three and a half. So, about 14 by nine centimetres. 
Right, let's get back to the, the critter page. Yes, so I was I like making up the names, but I also like making up the story behind them a little bit in my head. And that's really fun. The one with... This one, Tina, the big one. This one is a Strathmore journal. Um, I bought it to start doing art classes in. Did lots of Mickey Wilde stuff in there. So it's become a bit of a Mickey Wilde journal of sorts. Um, but it's got lots of the stuff from that um, class we were talking about. But it's a Strathmore um, journal. So it's got decent watercolour paper in. And it is nine inches by about five and a half so yeah is, this is one i bought i do i would love to learn how to do this binding um but dale this is a if you like doing this kind of stuff and you could go out finding stuff i really like going back and kind of like this one is from um blackpool bay and this one is from uh, a rock Pool, and I can't remember which one. This one was from Widemouth Bay. Um, I've got ones from the Black Country Museum. Lots of places that I've gone to visit. And they don't have to connect and they still look kind of cool. I mean, you, you could even make them connect and have conversations. Loads of fun to be had. Um, so thinking about this as a law, and he's got this funny little tail and he's also prancing. Those are giving me ideas for names. So the next thing I do is I ink them in. Now, my preferred fine liner, I, mean, I like I like the Sakura um, fine liners, but I I really like these Stateler ones. Um, they are water. I don't think it's water resistant. They're pretty much waterproof once they're dry. They don't smudge with um, water. Oh, thanks. Is it Jeanne or Jean or Jeannie? Okay, I should know that, but I say it different ways in my head all the time. I'm really bad with names, so if you want, if you can tell me how to say it, I would love that. So these ones, they come in um, different sizes. I've got two boxes because I've got doubles of some and then extra ones that I've put in. Um, I tend to use for these a 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and then sometimes I use a 0 0.05. Um, so I'm going to grab those out and if I get anything different, I will say so. Any kind of black pen that you know won't run if you put water on it afterwards. I think like these, I love these um, Signo Uniball black pens. They're a really lovely flowy line. But I found when you wet them, the black goes everywhere. So I don't use those for this. So I'll start with the 0 0.3. And what I'm going to do is I'm inking in the lines I want to keep. And then I can rub out the rest. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not picky, but I, I like to get things right. It's the um, the school child in me, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to think of a nickname for you. So I'm going to ink mine in. So if you are going along with me, I'm hoping you've had enough time to start thinking about what to put in your critter. Now, in terms of those eyes and the noses and things like that, I feel like I'm in slightly grey ground because I did start the collection in Mickey's class. So what I will probably do is I will get in touch with her, explain what I'm doing, tell, tell her that I've given her a jolly good mention and said her class is awesome and we've even shared the link, I think, in one of the lives. Um, and I can do that again at the end of this and see if she's okay with me sharing that with you. But it honestly is quite... Uh, fun and fairly easy thing to start building up your own collection using Google or Pinterest so I'm just literally going over these things I'm going to draw a circle in his eye to try and leave some white but if I don't manage to then I'm not going to mind too much because that's what white pens are for so I haven't got my right glasses on and I really do need to swap now. So bear with me just one second. And they're looking a little bit dusty as usual. What do you need to go shopping for, Nancy? You could make an accordion book. You have fine liners and a pencil. You're all good, honestly. 
there we go I can actually see what I'm doing goodness right I might get a slightly neater line now so just I wouldn't normally fill this in with the fine fine line that I'm just being a bit lazy so getting in those lines that I want to keep I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that eye back there so I've left it alone I tend to try and work from the top going down so that I'm not putting my hand into the fine liner because it will smudge when it's wet and I've got a gift for smudging things when they're wet so while I'm doing this I'm hoping some of you are drawing along or gathering some ideas but if you want to tell me what you've been up to or if you've got any questions I'm going to pop my head up every now and again and just have a little break to straighten my back awesome oh thanks Nancy uh, these pens these are Statler uh, fine liners Um, yay go for it Jess uh, stick it have you found the comments thread in the in the group where you can pop things up because lives don't let you post pictures but that's why I put a comment thread up and I felt super organized doing it so that you can post pictures up as you create them so I'm going to do a little tail now but any fine liner that's a 0.1 fine liner will work Nancy what else did you need to get the Mars Black Pencils, well, I, qu I do quite like them. And they do give you a lovely black that's not shiny. But I can use a graphite pencil today so we can see if it's the same, if you like. So, <laughs> Jeannie, I feel like I feel like that about white pens at the moment. No white pens like me. They all won't work. I've had to resort to um using dr p h martin's bleed proof white with a brush i'm feeling quite frustrated with white pens at the moment i mean some of it is probably because i need to use some new ones ah oh, i'm glad i helped you out there jess i didn't know that you couldn't share in lives either and then when i realized i thought oh well that's a bit useless i thought i would set up a thread so if you are arting along please share over on the thread so i'm having to turn my page around just to be able to get in here now i could do kind of a furry effect or stuff like that if i wanted to on his um legs and his body but i'm thinking that i might do spots or dashes what do you think shall we go for a spotty little prancer or one that's kind of got little dashes on him. Or her. Um, Kerry, I used, you can use anything you like. In the group files, I printed out a couple, three of my walks that make a map. So if you've got any walks or um, runs that you've done that you can get to on your phone, they're really fantastic. I've also popped in a couple of pictures. One's of a wall, I think from the Black Country Museum, and this is a pile of rubbish um that you could go in and you could find pictures from there if you've got a tree a garden you can go and look at those but i've stuck those into the file section so that you can use those if you want to um so if you go into the mindful watercolors group if you're on the computer over on the left hand side there will be files and you can click on that um but that's what i based mine on so i drew the outline shape of that and then started with where do i put an eye decided that this bit was definitely a horn and then kind of went from there hope that answered the questions right so i'm gonna add an extra little bit of i think one of the most fun things with this is if you can get a friend who also likes doing it and um they will send you a kind of splodge and you send them one back. I'm going to pen in this. Oh, I think my 0 0.1 pen is going a bit. I think I've... Oh, it's a 0 
Oh, nee, 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 nee. Yeah, no, wrong box. Okay, I don't have another 0 0.3 and I have damaged the nib on it. So I'm just going to use a 0 0.5. Let's see if that helps. I've used them a lot, especially with the mandala. So it might be that I need um, a couple of new ones. I shall see. There you go. So that's my fine lining bit for now. So, any ideas, spots or dashes? Cool. Do you, Kerry, if, does anybody who's painting along or creating along need a little bit of a break to do some catching up? I shall pause here and have a slurp of my Cherry Pepsi Max, which I'm very much enjoying. Mmm. Sorry if I'm making slurping and happy noises, but it's really... Oh, spots. Okay. Spots. We will do spots. When I do spots, and this is why I was asking now, I tend to like to draw them before I paint and then I go over them. So I'll try with a dodgy 0 0.3. So I'm going to pop some spots on him. I like to make sure I've got some that kind of go off like that. So I'm going to do a few of those in some different... Oh, spots are so cute everything looks good with spots well, except for me i don't look so good with spots and then some bigger ones and i'm not worrying about them being the same size particularly i'm just checking how we're doing for time really rather well and i'm i am having to consciously slow myself down which i think is probably the caffeine because I haven't drunk it for a while. I'm going to put some smaller ones in because I've got quite like variety in the size of the spots. So I'm just putting some of those in between some of the spaces. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to make his head spotty as well. Yeah, I am. So I'm going to use the same kind of approach and put one or two that are going on and off so they're not whole spots. And then put on some are whole spots but i'm going to make them closer in size to those smaller ones rather than having really big spots on his head now this is the back of his ear so that will be all kind of spots like this this in my head only that outside bit of the ear would have spots so now he's all spotty you can beg, Nancy, but you know that Tuesday is quiz night night with my sister. And last week we came fourth. Fourth is very impressive. The week before it was ninth. So we're, we're, we think this could be our week. And also, I, I can't, I don't let myself have my little glass of rum and coke until after I finish the live. In case I, you know, get too giggly and daft. <laughs> <laughs> mine is i tell you what tina every time i pick up an eraser in england we don't call them erasers we call them rubbers and i have to remind myself every time not to and it makes me giggle so i am totally with you there well yeah my when my um, eldest was uh really quite young he had a friend still has a friend they don't really talk to each other as much now they're older who was in america and we sent him a book of um English to American of the different words and also um, black country slang because we live in what's... I come from the black country. We now live in Warsaw, which is kind of not quite black country. Um, but black country is the... My accent is black country. It's not really thick black country, but it is. It's not... Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, now, don't tempt me. <laughs> um, it's it's a, a funny accent. My kids love it when I do a proper black country accent. So, for instance, if I was going to say using a black country accent, I won't do it. You can't make me. It would be, ah, whoa, yoke or make me. My children find that hysterical. It's not an accent that's really liked very much over in the UK. They kind of, it's got a bit of um. People assume you're not too clever. Um, so I'll then just baffle them with big words and stuff. I've, I used to feel the need to prove myself because of my accent. And that's kind of worn off as I've got older, which is quite awesome. Right. I'm hoping 
you have got if you are doing along you've got to your inking stage so you let it dry if you aren't sure you don't have a lot of time you can give it a blast with a heat gun or a hair dryer <laughs> black as in the color um tina northern england and wales oh my i've got welsh relatives my husband's nan was welsh she was from south wales which is swansea which is a totally different accent to North Wales, neither of which I can do, but they are really beautiful. Did you know that you can learn Welsh on Duolingo? And if you've got Irish um, roots or Sc and Scottish, um, you can learn Gaelic as well on Duolingo, I think, but I'm not sure whether it's Irish Gaelic or Scottish Gaelic and if there's a difference. Um, I can probably find you some examples, but I'm no good at accents other than black country because, well, you have, you have to be able to understand it. My mum was quite a stickler for us um, using grammatically correct stuff. She didn't mind an accent, but you had to had to be a grammatically kind of correct sentence. So there were certain things that we used to get told off for. If she's still on here, she'll know it's true. Oh, Kay, where are you from? Maybe we could get a recording of people who can do Welsh accents. I love a Welsh accent. My husband wooed me with his Welsh accent once upon a time. Could only say a few words, but it was very impressive to 15 year old me. So, so yeah, clean it up. And I'm really going in to make sure I've got rid of any of the pencil that I don't want. Because once I put paint on this, I won't be able to take it off. Right. Oh, uh, I used to call my great grandpa, granddad. I used to call. He's called. We called him Pops. Um, oh, awesome! I was a, technically, I suppose my kids are. If their nan was Welsh, that would make them what a quarter Welsh. Technically, I suppose. Um, is that right? Have I worked it out right. Half no, an eighth. That'd be an eighth. Oh, that means Kay's got an awesome accent. I now need to hear Kay talk. I may have to come and visit you when we're allowed to visit people, Kay. Just saying. I love I love North Wales. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. I haven't been able to go to South Wales as much. North Wales is relatively close to the Midlands in terms of driving. And when we were younger. I used to live with my husband's um, parents and for a chunk before we were married and then after we were married for a year we lived there and we bought a static caravan in Wales so that at the weekend, because we were working when we bought it as teachers, we would go down to Wales. Oh... See, now my longing for the sea is getting worse and worse and worse. But it will be fine. The sea and I will see each other again. And now we're ready for paint. So we have to decide what kind of colour. Did I ever show you the top? This is the top to my big circle of paints. Can anybody guess what it's made from? And yes, Kay, please do a recording for us. Go on. Yes, indeed, Nancy. I think the internet is awesome and I love that it's letting us connect like this. I think it's fab. I'm just going to give you time to have a guess. I, I, I might be able to turn it over, but things might fall off. Let's see. Yeah, I can. It's like, it looks like that. A few things did try and fall off. I'm going to pop it out of the way. Oh, I don't... Mm, have I been there? I don't know. I've been to some beaches, I don't know. It is, it's a pizza tray that I stuck paper onto with like Mod Podge. I didn't use Mod Podge actually, I used um, matte gel medium. And then I black gessoed over it and then I metallic watercolored it and then I did white pear. 
So you can kind of see a little bit of the black gesso there. And I collaged bits of paper on this side and then this side I did just stick down some scrapbooking paper because it had holes in because it was a pizza tray. That was very close, Margaret. You you were probably the closest. Cake, cake tin, yes. Cake, I did try a cake tin lid. It wasn't quite big enough. So I've got my spinny spinny, but I don't know what colours to use. In fact, I'm not going to choose the colours because I think it would be way more fun if you chose a colour. Oh, I have not used Powertex, Kerry. What is Powertex? I can't Google for myself because it would mean me putting my arms in the picture which won't make for a great live so i'll google it afterwards excuse me i'm opening the pop sorry sherlock i woke him up because it was loud he's giving me that look going why okay my throat gets a bit dry when i'm talking lots so what color should we use violet i love purples yes i could go with purples i'll get my mixing tray out ready Oops, a daiso, and I will kill one of my poor little paints. Did nothing to deserve that. Pop that there. I think you'll be able to see that. Now grab out some brushes. Ah, uh Sherlock. -uh. Tempting piece of paper fell on the floor on top of him. Okay, don't don't tell me then. I'll Google it because it's Andrew. I'm quite excited now to find out what it is. So, my brush pot is is pretty big, um, but this bit over here those are the brushes that the kids can use without asking <laughs> those are the ones that i they, they can absolutely use these ones they can use them and they do use them but i tend to sit and watch them and some of them they i don't let them use because they're my favorites and i would genuinely be quite sad and some of them i couldn't afford to buy again so so having a little look in here i'm thinking we need some finer small brushes and I've put all the brushes in and they're all smooshed up. So I'm going to have to get them out. I'm really sorry if this is making horrible clacky clacky noises. So I'm just going to grab out small ones that I think I might use for now. And then I will narrow it down. That's my fun brush from last week. It's very awesome. That is my... Oh, it's lost its plastic top. Oh no. That's my very, very, very fine brush. Is there anything else that I might want? I might want that one. And oh, I want you for picking up colours with. So I've gone for my usual kind of brushes, but I'm trying to pop in some rounds as well. I had to hunt them down. They're a bit hard to find. And I can't find them again now. Oh, here you go. These are the rounds I've got. So in my heap, and these normally live like in my water pot. I've got this old one and that's what I'm going to use to pick up colours with because picking up colours and going around damages your brushes and I'm trying really hard to remember to use one to pick up with. So I've grabbed some fine, really fine tipped brushes and I've got this one here was a birthday present from my mum and it is a 20 -0. I probably won't need anything that fine but it is really fun to play with. This is a Pro Art 10 -0 brush. They come in a set. I don't know if you can get them in the US but they're a set just, you get brushes that are for painting miniatures and that's what this is. Hi, Wendy. Oh, the, we're, we're, we're kind of creating our critter. So we've drawn him. So if you wanted to paint along, it might be more fun to watch the replay. Um, and then these ones are similar from the same set. And they're just 4.0 and a 5.0. Um, so they're quite fine. And then I've got a triple zero and a zero spotter. These, these are hard to get in the US. Oh, thank you, Dale. I really appreciate you coming, especially at that time in the morning. Big hugs and go rest your eyes and have a lovely sleep. So I'll grab those out. Then these black ones are spotters. And I've got a five, a three and a one. And they are getting to the point where they're starting to need replacing. I don't know if you can see, but on this one, there are bristles that are sticking out. And although I've used the soap and stuff to recondition them, they're just getting worn. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, Jill. Um, these are rounds. These are, they aren't anything particularly super posh or expensive, I don't think. They are Master Touch 
um, rounds and they came in a set going all the way from I think size 2 or size 0 all the way up to about um, an 8 or 10 or something and you could use them for acrylics I tend to keep my watercolour brushes just for watercolours and then I've got acrylic brushes that I keep for acrylics if there's a watercolour brush that I'm finding is too hard or isn't working for me it goes in the acrylic pot to try with acrylics uh, so these are in a 2, a 4 and a 6 now if you look at these two you can see the difference between a spotter and a round so this is a 2 and this is a 3 so they're very similar size and if you look the thickness this one's a bit thinner because it's a 2 and that one's a bit fatter because it's a 3 but you can see that that too is lots longer and that's the big difference between spotters and ordinary rounds and what that does is it gives you the opportunity to kind of almost draw with your brush and that's why I like them because a lot of what I've been doing with myself and helping myself get better at is to not draw first and a spotter's helped me to do that because it's similar to a, a pencil and that's kind of help but a round will work just as well so I've just got some rounds and some spotters my old brush and some fine ones so we've got violets hello Mavi it's good to see you so Jeanne Jeannie oh, I need to know how to say it said violet so I'm gonna have a look in my purples and see what I've got I know that I quite like this one it's not really violet it's more maroon but I'm definitely going to pop it on there as a possibility to use so it's that one. This one is probably going more violety. Now, violet to me is kind of maybe paler. Has anybody else got any other colour suggestions to kind of combine with it? And that one, that one feels more. That one's quite fun. And then I want kind of something that's a kind of more bluey, more intense purple. So I'm just going to jump over a bit to there. Okay. So I'm not going to paint around the spots because that is going to be too tricky. Um, I am going to grab my number one spotter and my number two round. And I'm going to add some water to this. Lime green. Lime green sounds a really good one, Margaret. So what I'm probably going to do for the lime green is go in maybe with Posca pen or uh, some kind of paint pen. Because I don't really want to have to paint around all of these spots. I think it will get a bit too fiddly. But I think lime green could work really well. And maybe lime green, I could paint that in lime green. Lime green toes would be quite fun. Yeah. I might even make the spots white. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to start and I'm going to use my brush to just go up to the edge. Now I've gone over that edge a little bit. It's not the end of the world, I don't really mind too much. If you do mind, if you very quickly press down on it with a tissue, it will generally lift unless you've got a staining colour. Now purples and blues can stain more. So I'm just going to pop that back in. And I'm just, I have this terrible problem with dog hair sometimes but also these brushes sometimes I've noticed that they have a little bristly hair sticking out the end that needs trimming off and I think that's what this one's got there we go um, now sometimes in this journal the um, the paint can bleed a little bit no too many brushes normally I just paint it with a big brush there you go so I'm just going to go around this with a slightly finer brush and I do take a bit of time now I don't want this bit to dry so I'm just going to get some water on my brush and just put some water there just to keep the edge that kind of leading edge a little bit wet and I've left it a little bit light but because I'm going to go in with another one of my purples and that's why I've got a few in there is so that I can get some variation in the colours. Now you don't need to have different purples because obviously you could do this with a blue and a red or by adding a blue and a red to it. So I am going to just do the same thing again with this finer brush. Go here. Like this. Right. 
and carry that on under here. Apologies if my kids are um, being loud and being picked up. They are upstairs, but sometimes when they're on their computers, they get a little bit loud. There we go. I'm going to pop some of this dark just in here. Again, just, you know, it doesn't, it's not really a right or a wrong to where they go. I'm just looking for some variety in the colours. And while it's still wet, I can actually drip in more colour so I can create darker areas if I want to, to create interest or shading. And I'm just using that really fine brush to go around those patterns and up to those edges to make it a bit easier for me. I am finding that this brush has got a little sticky out bit that is annoying me and making it hard. So I'm just going to grab a different brush. Um, I don't have any other rounds and I think that's why with those ones they haven't got lots and lots of use from me because that the kind of finish is okay and most of them are fine but sometimes I'm getting that and I just I tend to get a bit like I use the ones that I know work until they are worn out so I'm just going to go in and just kind of drop in a little bit more here because I want it to be a bit dark up here and you can see it's still a little bit wet. Now working in this Moleskine journal is different to working on 300 GSM watercolour paper, which is what I would suggest you did. And my paper can peel a bit more easily. Gold is a really cool idea. I love the idea of having lime green on him, but I'm thinking maybe for the furry bit and for his nails in lime green, maybe his horn and the inside of his ear. But I like the idea of gold spots, yes, very much. I'm going to grab a little bit of this one that's a bit too dark. You can see I'm using them fairly, fairly watery. And this one's a warmer colour. So I'm just adding a little bit of that on here. And then I'm going to go back to that one. And add a little bit of that. And then just a little bit of that kind of darker purple one. And then I might even add a little touch that one just along there. I really, I do look, that one's really lovely. I'm going to pop a little bit of that here because it just feels like um, a nice little colour. And then I'm just using a little bit of plain water just to soften that edge a bit. I'm really quite happy with the body. I'm going to do the same kind of thing on his head. I am going to turn it upside down. Yeah, I would, in terms of if I could do anything I like, um, a yellow gold would be lovely. I'm just looking at my Posca pens and the paint pens that I've got, and I haven't got that kind of colour. But what I have got is I've got gold pens and gold paint. So I went to gold and thought, oh, yeah, that would be a good compromise. But yeah, yellow yellow could be a really nice, a, a warm yellow. And if I painted round the spots, or if I used acrylic paint on the top, which would absolutely work beautifully, I could mix a really gorgeous tone like that. Um, so yeah, that, but that's why I went with gold and, and got to gold. I, I loved the idea of that, but then recognised I would find that a bit tricky to do with watercolours um, without a lot of faffing, for want of a better word. So that's very wet. So I'm just going to dry my brush off on my tissue and then just pull... And then I'm going to get a little bit more water. Again, take the excess off on my tissue so I'm controlling how much water. I want to keep the edge wet. I am going around the tooth if I can. And the thing with watercolours that I think is probably really good advice is to start light. Because you can always get darker. But getting lighter is really quite hard. You can always intensify it and they do dry lighter. So I'm going to add some of this colour now to here. And again going to use a dryer brush just to move it around a little bit a little bit of that color because oh, i do love i really love that color i think it might mm, might be rose of ultramarine or something like that one of my jobs for this week is to photograph my palette and then label the photograph with all the names and then reorganize my swatches so that they're in the right order for my palette to help me out with knowing what colors i've used Thanks, Jeannie. I, I just didn't want you to think I wasn't 
like listening to you or was kind of only picking a bit that was literally my thought process so because yeah i think a yellow i mean yellow and purple is one of those difficult ones it either looks awesome or it looks a bit odd but i think in this case it would look quite awesome so absolutely you know if you've got acrylics handy i could probably grab mine out but i would all the other ones in the book have been just watercolour, so I'm kind of sticking with that a little bit. So this bit by his ear, I want to put a little bit of water because I want it to blend up to his ear so it kind of gets there softly. So the colour goes from like slightly darker to lighter there almost. And then I'm just going to add some more colour into here. I'm even going to grab a little bit of this um, purple and just dip it in there and let it go down i'm going to make sure it goes up into the tip with my little fine brush and then down here on his chin where it would be in the shadow i'm going to add more paint because we can go in and add that with pencil but also it's good to add it in with the paint and i'm just gonna i want the colors to be a bit more intense on his head so i'm just going and adding a few more and then for this little ear i'm going to go with that kind of color that warmer purple, the plummy kind of colour. And then add some of that darker purple. In it it's I'm trying to think of how to answer Nancy's question about is it watercolour paper? I think they say it is. I can't remember. Um but if you can see, I mean that's I've used much less water than I normally would and you can kind of see here it's got wet where the bend is so you have to be careful and you have to be a bit patient like I know I've reached the limit even though if this was a drawing and I'd done it in my sketchbook on the heavy watercolour paper I'd be able to go much heavier and get more intensity and I probably would as it is I can't because the paper's not only buckling if I use my brush on this part anymore where it's quite wet I'm probably going to make a hole um so i that's it is it's it's tricky i i like these they're lovely little sketchbooks and if you've got one you want to use them for something like this it would be great but it's way easier to paint watercolors on heavier watercolor paper so if you don't have one wouldn't necessarily go out and buy this one um especially not if you're a beginner because it is it makes it really challenging to be painted on thinner paper the one thing that makes a big difference isn't the quality of your paints or even your brushes it's the paper so if there's one thing that you can afford to spend a little bit more on it would be i'd get the best paper that you can because that's what makes it easier and it is definitely much lighter than watercolor paper you can literally see the difference in the thickness so nancy yes you are quite correct lime green hmm i like this idea oh, i've only got three minutes left well they didn't manage my time very well did i right okay let's get some i've got may green i think that will do quite well as um a limey green and i'm going to grab a little bit of something that i can put with it that will make it a bit dark and i'm going to go for some cobalt teal light which is a little bit opaque and I don't know why, but mine keeps coming off as if I've got soapy water on it. I haven't. I don't know why it's like that. So I grab some of that. And I'm going, oh, thank you, Gina. That's a really nice compliment. I very much appreciate that. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab my tissue again. And I'm going to pop some of that lime green on. And I'm just going to spread a little bit all over that horn. And, oh, I do like that. That's very fun. And I'm going to then drip a little bit to make a slightly more intense colour down the middle. I'm gonna get a little bit, I don't want a wet brush particularly. Um, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of this and that's a bit too dark. So I'm just drying my brush and I've just gone in and lifted it off a little bit. And then I'll get a little bit more of the green. And I just want to create just a little bit of variation in the colours that are on there. So that I'm just, So it's not just all green. I quite like that and I can see that I can add some more bits. I'm going to do the same kind of thing on his little ruffle of 
throw there probably something similar on his tail. Don't know about this bit yet, and I'm going to do his toes. So. I'm just literally going to pop the green in. And then about halfway, I'll wash my brush out. So I've just got water on my brush. So it will graduate from darker to light because all I'm doing is just moving existing paint down with a little bit of the water. So that instantly gives me a bit of that variety that I'm looking for. A little touch of that blue up here, just where his kind of chin would give a shade maybe. And a few little dots. And then I can pick up a little bit more of the green, just watery green. I just add that in to soften it and anywhere where I feel like I need a bit more of a hit of green, I can do that and be in control of kind of how it comes down. Again, about quarter left, I've just got plain water on my brush now just to soften out where that kind of line divides and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my triple zero now because I know these are going to be quite fiddly um, and the smaller brush really helps me. What helps me might not help you. Thanks, Kate. It's a gorgeous green. I think it's Sennelier. Um, but it's definitely called May Green. So either Sennelier or Schminke. That's really wet there. So I'm going to just go in onto the paint. And I need a more intense little bit that's got more pigment in it and less water. So I'll just mix that on the edge there. And you'll see now when I go in, it's less watery and it's more intense. Now you can see I'm not doing the whole nail. That's because I'm going to wash my brush off, dry it, and then I'm just going to spread that. Because that again will give us a little bit of that variety in the intensity of the colour. Because I'm using the paint and moving it down a little bit. If that's not quite enough, I can get a, I can get a brush that's quite dry and I can try and lift off like that. I can also I put a little bit of water on there and then press my tissue and you can create little highlights by lifting. So a bit of water and then press and you can see that I can create just some little highlights on there that just make it a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna do the same down here on these. Now that's watery because I picked it up from the middle rather than the edge where I've mixed my nice creamy bit so I'm just drying the colour off and just pulling it down a little and if too much colour goes on my brush I'm just drying it off on the uh, tissue giving it a quick wash if I need to and I'm just trying to just make sure the green comes all the way down and hopefully I'll get a more intense bit of green at the top I can also go in I just want a little bit of blue on my brush, so I'm taking, and then just over on the left hand side, I'm putting a little curve of blue, and I'll do the same up here, so on the bottom of these ones. So you just get a little bit of variety. Then we've got his little towel to do. I am going to need to spin him round. I know I said seven to eight, so if you guys need to go because it is now after eight, then. I am very grateful that you've come along and enjoyed this with us. And I'm sorry that I didn't manage my time better so that I was finished in time. So I've done him all the way up, just in a kind of a light version of that lime green. Now, I'm going to pick up some of this cobalt blue. And I'm going to put it just here, just here, and just here. Because those bits, it's almost like um, it's a telescopic thing and it's popped out. And then along here, 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 and there to give a little bit of shadow. So I said I also wanted to do the inside of that ear lime green, which I do. So I'm going to pop a bit on, dry my brush off to move it around. I don't want it to be as dark as in other places. So just like that. He's looking quite good. I think one of the things I do want to do is go back in and add that in in a nice dark kind of purpley colour. So I'm going to pop that on. I'm actually going to grab, oh, that was a bit, that was a lot of dark purple. I'm going to grab a kind of an intense bit from my palette just to add that on if I can. And I'm just touching and releasing with my brush where I've made it wet. 
just to try and make it a bit darker. Okay, okay. So I think that that is also going to be gold. So I'm at the stage now where I'm saying, come on, when are we doing the quiz? I am sorry. How will I name him? I will, well, he looks like he might be a greater spotted something. A greater spotted something or that. I need to give him a blast with my heat gun so that I can do the next bit. Um, because I want to put some pencil shades and I want to put some gold on there. So, excuse the noise. If you've got any questions, please pop them up because this is going to take me a minute and I can answer them once I've finished. Yes, he's feeling nice and dry. Okay, so I'm going to pop in now with a soft B pencil. If you've only got HB, use that. It will work. Um, and I'm probably going to use my 7B. It does need a little bit of a sharpen. I bought my kids these sharpeners off Amazon. Oh, gosh, it's been about months ago. And I really like them. They give you a fantastic point. Way better than lots of other sharpeners. So I don't actually know what they're called or what brand they are. Because I didn't go for them for any reason other than, you know... They were reasonably priced and arrived quickly. Oh, that's so frustrating, isn't it? So I have got a little blender. So what I'm going to do is where I think there would be shadow. So here at the bottom of his tummy, there would be shadow. Where that leg goes over his tummy, there would be shadow. And then I'm just going to smoosh it. Then around this main bit here, kind of there would be a shadow because in my head it's sticking up and sticking out from his body. And I don't, I don't need to get these shadows everywhere, and they don't need to be 100% realistic. But thinking about where things would be sitting on top of or sticking out of helps me to figure out where I'm going to like it. So again, I'm going to smoosh that. Now you can see a seven B has got a lot of dark to it, so you do need to be quite gentle and I'm just going to soften those out by just going round and round a bit and this is why I need to dry it. if my paper was even a tiny bit wet that would just tear and make holes I'm also knowing I need to put some shadow kind of here because it's under his chin where his head is I'm going to do that and again I'm going to smoosh it out like that I'm also going to put some over here on the curve of his butt I feel like that might need a bit. I tend to do this before I put the white pen details on. That You can do it the other way around if you want to. I want to put some on either side of his leg. Like that. Because if I've got dark on either side and light in the middle, it will make it look a little bit... <coughs> excuse me, 3D. I want to do the same here. Just carry this down a little. Like that. Like that, and I am going to just do that. And then on his head, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow there for that ear. I'm going to put a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit kind of underneath that horn and on this bottom edge of it to start with. And we'll see how we look when we've kind of smudged those in just a little yes I'm liking that and then on his tail I'm going to put it on this bottom edge like that and over on this side just a little bit and then kind of the base as if it was poking up and out now my husband is going to come down thinking that I'm finished so we shall see there we go that's him nearly done um and so i've got the gold that i wanted to put on and the white spots so for the white or the gold spots i think i was going to go with gold spots i'm going to use um fluid acrylic no with a 7b or an 8b pencil i didn't have to press hard at all um 
you do, I was trying it out and I, it, it might be worth getting just an 8B in something that's, you know, nice and soft and seeing if you can, Nancy. But I didn't have to press hard at all. Um, and the other way is you could get your husband to do a load of smudging on a piece of scrap paper and then you can just kind of use what's on here a little bit was my other thought. So I've got some of this acrylic and I've got this tray that I'm going to pop it in. Now, what I'm not sure I've got is a small enough acrylic brush to um, be able to get my spots on how I want them to. So I'm going to have a little bit of fertile around. I can see this one that I can use, yeah. So that's, um, it's golden fluid acrylics and it's, I think, iridescent, no, iridescent, iridescent bright gold fine. You can absolutely use a pen. You can use metallic watercolour if you want to. I am just knowing that this should coat it in one go without any difficulties and will dry fairly fast and isn't going to wet my paper anymore so it kind of is going to work for me today I've squirted out rather a bit too much so Ooh, itchy, itchy nose. there we go down on his body and you can see he's going on in one go which is really good so what I think I'm going to do is I'll show you how I'll finish him off with the white and I'll paint that little bit I can find a really fine brush if that's okay with you guys so just getting those last little ones in I often find as well that I quite want to re-ink around things like this just to make sure I've got a nice line that's got all of those so the next thing that I want to do is grabbing one of my mechanical pencils I just want a fine pencil lead and my pencil isn't very sharp and I just want to just put just some loose little circles around his eye because I really like that as a look then I'm going to grab I think this is a Signo Uniball and I'm hoping it's going to work yes I'm going to put that little white in there and I'm toying with the fact that I would quite like to be able to pop in some little white spots. So I am going to just pop in some small ones in the spaces. Just, just because I like white dots, if I'm honest. And I'm gonna pop some up here as well. I'm trying not to put my hand. This is why I tend to try and make myself work top to bottom because I'm really good at putting my hands in the um, last place that I want them. I'm going to put a little bit of a, just a light, what kind of height light there. And then just along here, just kind of, just it's like a broken line. You, you, you don't want your pen to be working brilliantly. You want to get a broken line coming along there. And then... I'm just going to put a few little white lines in his furry bit and then down here on his toes the opposite side to where I put the dark so which is the right and then the top 
I'm putting a white curve like that and then I'm just gonna go over his little tooth and other than painting this gold he or she is done and I'm thinking he's he's a a greater golden spotted something so I'm gonna get that bit down while I've got that bit of the name so greater golden spotted and then I've got to think of what he's luring or what he's gobbling up when he's lured them and when I know that I will be able to finish off his name and like I said I am going to paint this gold I just want to I need to get all my brushes out and find a really fine brush um so that is the process from start to finish so if you um didn't manage to get in for the beginning the video will go up and it will stay in the group so you'll be able to watch the replay and I talk you through the whole process from finding the shape up to where we are now and in the file section in the group you can find the file that has got the picture in that we started with which was this one uh, that we did our initial shape from and some other examples and some ideas of where you could go finding them from i really enjoyed doing that i hope you enjoyed him so thank you all i will see you all soon i am going to run off now and clear up the debris of my art desk because i've got things everywhere have lovely evenings or mornings or nights wherever you are